And good afternoon, options traders, and happy Friday, everyone. I thought this would be a perfect time to talk a little bit about volatility trading and why you must be so careful with Vega. Volatility trading is a really popular strategy right now because volatility is, well, through the roof. And it creates opportunities for traders, but it can also create traps if you're not careful with Vega. So let's take a closer look at volatility trading and one of the key traps that traders tend to step into. So the first thing to understand is that volatility tends to revert to its long-term average. It's just what's called mean reversion. So a common indicator or measurement of volatility is the VIX or the volatility index. And if you go back to about 1990, the long-term average is about 20%, but it can get a whole lot higher and it can also get lower. Usually if it dips below 10%, that's about as low as you're going to see it. But when volatility is significantly higher or lower than this long-term average of 20%, it creates trading opportunities. So for example, let's go over to the E-Trade platform and take a look at the VIX. So here we are in early 2020, right before coronavirus. And then once the news started to break, look at volatility. Got up to just a touch over 85 which is literally off the charts. Only a couple of times in history have we been this high. But you can also see that it tends to fall quickly back towards its long-term average. And this is what traders are banking on. So if you think about it, you don't really need stock prices to rise or fall to make money. What you need is a number to rise or fall. So just as easily as you can trade stock prices, you can do the same with volatility. The one nice thing about volatility is this property of mean reversion. So even though the S&P 500 index has had a very long-term upward bias, check it out. Volatility just tends to go sideways. Here's the fourth quarter of 2018. Big sell-off going into the fourth quarter. If we go back to, here's 2015. This is when we had all of the trouble in China, disruptions on the Chinese markets, devaluations of the currency, lots of things going on creating uncertainty during that time. Let's go back to 0809 financial crisis. Look at this, another time got actually close to 90, but fairly quickly came back down to this long-term average. So notice that it just goes sideways. See, that's not true for most stock prices and certainly not for the S&P 500 index. But for volatility, it is true. So how can you capitalize on this? Well, one of the strategies that traders use is to look at, let's say, diagonal spreads. And here's why they'll do it. Let's go up here to options. And I'm going to switch over to, let's say, Roku would be a good example right now. So if we click on this little icon here, we can get what's called the horizontal skew or the tilt. So notice that for the shorter term expirations, that the implied volatility is up here at about 131%, but it quickly tails off. So what traders will do is they'll say, well, let me buy a longer dated option, maybe out here with, let's say at about 75% volatility, and I'll sell one of these shorter term ones, you know, maybe up here at 130% or maybe at 100%, and then when the volatility pulls back to its long-term average, I'll make money because the volatility that I'm selling will take a bigger fall than the one that I'm buying. And that might be true, but it might not. And that problem is Vega. So Vega is one of the key Greeks for our options and Vega shows the options sensitivity to volatility. So let's say that you have a $100 call trading for $10 and that's priced at 40% volatility. But you also look on your broker's platform and it says that the Vega is 0.2. What does this mean? What it means is that if volatility falls by one percentage point, or what we call is one tick, in other words, falling from 40 to 39, that's a one percentage point move or a one tick move, that $100 call loses one tick times Vega of 0.2 or 20 cents. So that $10 call is going to trade for about $9.80. Keep in mind that that's assuming all other factors are the same. 
We are not assuming that three months has gone by, which will also devalue the option, or that the stock price has gone up or down. We're assuming that right now you buy the option at 10, and one second later, volatility drops to 39%. That's going to have an effect of about 20 cents on that option. Well, what if volatility falls from 40 to 20%? You have to be really careful about extending your Greeks over wide ranges because technically they're for very small changes in whatever it is that they're measuring. So in this case, you could probably estimate it and get reasonably close by saying this is 20 ticks falling from 40 to 20. And therefore this $100 call loses 20 ticks times 0.2 Vega or about $4. It's probably going to be a little bit more than that, but that will get you close. Now the problem for the traders who are trying these diagonal spreads to capitalize on volatility is that Vega is higher for the longer dated options. And that's what creates the potential problem. So for instance, here's an Excel spreadsheet that has some option prices generated from a pricing model. I've got the stock and the strike at 100. And let's take a look at a seven day option. And we're going to price it with a volatility of 100. It's worth 552. And the Vega would also be 0.05. But now we're going to assume that it instantaneously drops, let's say, to a volatility of 40, in which case that option is worth 220. Now to capitalize on this, the trader goes out and buys an option with 49 days to expiration. And it's priced at volatility of 75%, which makes it worth 1092. So if volatility drops to 40%, and let's say that both of these options fall back to let's say 40% as this long-term average, it's going to trade at 584. The problem is that when this trader bought this at 1092, it had a Vega of 15. Notice it's three times as big as the one that you sold. So what happens to the prices? Well, here, the one that you sold fell from 100 to 40, which certainly looks good. The one that you bought fell from 75 to 40, only 35 percentage points or 35 ticks. So the one that you sold fell far more than the one that you bought. And therefore traders say, I must have made money. Not necessarily. And it's because of these Vegas. So take a look that this option fell from 552 to 220, a change of 332 or a fall of 60%. The one that you bought fell from 1092 to 584, or just over $5, even though it's only 47%. It's a much bigger dollar amount. Why? Because the Vegas are so much bigger. And so what happens is if we look in this column, you could have purchased this diagonal spread by spending 1092 and selling the shorter dated one for 552. It would have cost you 540. But when you go to sell it, you're going to collect only 364. And that's because you can sell your long position for 584, but you have to spend 220 to buy back the short. So take a look. You bought it for 540, you sell it for 364, you have a $1.76 loss. Even though the volatility fell 60 ticks on the one that you sold, and it only fell 35 ticks on the one that you bought. That is not necessarily going to make you money. And this is why you have to be careful about the differences in the expiration dates when you are doing volatility trading. So for anyone who may have been using diagonal spreads, finding out that they were right, or at least apparently correct, that the volatility on the one that they sold was far more than the one that they bought, but they still lost money, Vega is the reason. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.